What is up my Neo Vim friends? Today we're going to be talking about the Vim global command or the G command if you haven't been using that before. I'm going to walk you through a few different examples, show you some really cool features and explore this option. So, you know, classic Neo Vim, you have a lot of different tools in your tool bag to be able to manipulate text and accomplish different things. And this is one of them that I think you should have in your toolbox to be able to match things and run commands. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. My name is Andrew and I do a lot of these NeoVim videos as well as other technical videos. So if you like those kind of things, hit that subscribe button. And if you like the video, hit the like button so that other people can see it. Let's start by talking about the global command, which is one of several modes inside of Vim or NeoVim. Each of these different modes has a special purpose and special use cases. So insert mode, visual mode, um, this global command has a different mode so that you can match things and perform different operations. So think of it like chaining multiple things, like you would match a character or a part of a line, and then you would perform some kind of Vim command operation on it. So that's how I like to think about it. I'll walk you through a few different examples and I'll show you some cool things. So like I just mentioned the G command. So if you do G and then some pattern, so like maybe a word, then it'll match on that pattern and then you can perform some kind of an operation. So this is auto completing. If you haven't seen my video on my most requested feature inside of NeoVim, this is how I get the functionality here and we can do a bunch of different options. So we could do like GW and match on word, or we could, you know, do all kinds of different things. And so if we have that pattern match, then one of the things we could do is delete the line. So if we do D, then this is going to delete all the lines that match the word word, which is very creative. So if we see that, then all of those are going to be removed. You can see in the top right, we have four fewer lines in the file. Now, what if you want to delete everything that is not a match? So if we revert our file and we do again G and then we have word, well, let's say we want to delete all the lines that don't have word in them. So we just want to keep those. So if we go over here and do a bang, so G bang and then word and then D, this will delete all the lines that don't match that. And so you can see all the word lines here. Those are all kept in the file and we have a much shorter file. This is really useful for modifying stack traces or looking for things inside of a large output. You can just go through and delete everything and then only have the subset of information you need to work with. The next example I want to go through is substitution. So being able to substitute characters inside of your matches, you can do this in a different way by doing the percent %s and you can perform matches similar to the G option, which I'm going to show you here. So if we do this where it's G and then we match on error and then we have S and so this means we're going to substitute. So we're matching on error. We're going to perform a substitution and then we're going to swap error for error message. And one of the things to note here is you don't have to substitute the exact character that you're matching on. So let's say you have a stack trace and then you want to match on maybe like a, a certain error type within that stack trace. Then you can do that and then swap it out to be something else. For us, if we did like a G stack trace and then we swapped out for Bob, or I'm sorry, let's actually just do error and then we do Bob. And if we execute this, this will perform one swap on the first match. So it's going to find all the lines that match stack trace, and then it's going to swap out error and make it Bob, but it's only going to do that once. If you want to do it more than once, then you do the G similar to how you would do the percent S and that'll swap it out on the entire line. So if we do this, then we should see Bob here that's been swapped out on each of those lines. This next example, you should be able to execute a command on those matching lines. So we've already been executing commands, but you can do a normal command, which you wouldn't think to do just out of the box, in my opinion. I don't use this feature as much, but it is a possibility. So this option here, if we matched on to do, and then we did a normal and we did capital A to append to the end of the line, then we could add comments the very end of those lines and say like, this is a great line of code. And so if we ran this, then we can see that that gets updated on both of those to do lines. You could also do something like G and then to do, and then a normal I, which would append to the front. And we could put Bob at the front of the line and, you know, 
manipulate text in normal mode however we want to. So this is a really cool capability. I admittedly don't use this one very much. Maybe it's just because I don't think about it, but now you know about it as well. If you wanted to copy all the lines that are matching, then you can do the yank command. And so G and then pattern and then yank. And then this will put that into your buffer. And you can see that I have that in my buffer to be able to paste. Similarly to how you would do percent %s and do that matching, you can also use regex patterns to be able to match more complex lines and be able to perform different operations. Like this one, you could do any line that contains a digit. Maybe you want to delete all the ones that have digits or all the ones that end with the match bar and then delete those. All of these are just the delete examples, but you could perform any of the commands like we talked about. You could do a yank, you could do a normal command, any of those are options. All right, the last example that I wanna go over right now is chaining multiple commands. So you can use this pipe syntax and you can go matching a pattern, run a command, and then perform another command. I admittedly don't do this very much, probably just from muscle memory of always spamming uh, colon W to write or to quit or something. But you could do something where you match on uh, this debug and then you delete all those lines. And then if you pipe that to W, then this will write the file. And so you have one command that's chained. And so if you run this, then it will write the file after we delete all the lines that have debug in them. So a little bit of nice syntax to get everything in one go. I personally don't use this one as much, but now you know about it. Those are all the commands that I wanted to go over today for the Vim global command. Now, hopefully this is a tool that you have in your toolbox to be able to change text and manipulate buffers. If you like videos like this, then let me know in the comments and I will plan to have some more videos like this in the near future. So thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one.